Hi, my name is Andrei Kudravtsev and welcome to my studio. Today we are going to talk about this. This is a Deft Audio MicroPort controller, which is a single knob MIDI controller. This is not just about it. This is an ultimately MIDI configurable controller with lots of expanded hardware features such as MIDI interfaces, output and inputs, it has audio output, it has USB, and it can be configured in many, many different ways. So to get started, let's take a drawing board and I'll give you some introduction of the features of this controller. So first, um, I'll, it's a hardware. Let's start with the hardware. We have one encoder. We have one push button which is basically integrated to the encoder as well as there are two color LEDs integrate into the encoder which we can configure it in many different ways. Then we have MIDI input which is a hardware MIDI input. Then we have MIDI output and we have three of them. Finally, we have USB connectivity and device itself presents it under the OS as four MIDI devices. It's cool, right? And finally, we have some preset management systems to manage up and down for the preset management. And we have audio output which can be again configured for different ways. It can be click output, it can be sync output. Anyway, all of this hardware de design is based around Teensy, which is a new name of a microprocessor, extremely configurable, integrated into the Arduino framework. And all of this comes with a firmware, which can manage all of this functionality. And what's the most important, you can design many of that functionality on your own. So, what comes to the firmware and what it can be. You notice it's not that simple now, it gets more and more technical. Inside the configuration firmware, let's call it program, we have up to 10 macros, which is a set of parameters that you can, con that you can configure in real time. So only one macro is active at a time, and there are 10 of them which just saved and pre-configured for different reasons. So in every macro we have configuration for the button, which can trigger different parameters such as node, such as CC, or uh, other configurations. It can be push button or with latch. And then we have five controllers. What means controller? Basically, controller is a parameter that can send different types of parameters at the same time. So every controller can send CC message, it can send note messages, it can send program change message, it can change, it can send an RPM. Oh wait, sorry. It's not yet implemented. It will be implemented later. And finally, it can work in a sync clutter mode, which is a way to run sync clutter Go application for iPad or iPhone. Anyway, this is what we have per controller. And each controller can output itself to USB or to MIDI. And you can configure what USB port you want to output, what MIDI port you want to output, MIDI channel on, and all other functionality. So this is cool, right? Also, because we have one MIDI input, we can define how that MIDI input is routed to, the, um, uh, to other outputs or USB. By the default, everything which is coming to USB from a computer it gets into own hardware MIDI port. So we have 4X USB uh, under the OS, and first three of them goes to output one, two, and three. 
So this is pretty much easy. Gives you a capability to run this controller as a USB MIDI interface. Cool enough, right? And the MIDI input, by the default, it goes to the USB input number one. So you can save it under operating system, obviously, all the data coming. But you can also say MIDI input can go straight to the MIDI output. So for instance, if you want to place that controller in between your synth and other MIDI interface, you just, everything that goes into the MIDI input is merged with the controller parameters and goes to the hardware MIDI output. As well as you may say, I want to send my MIDI input to all three outputs at the same time, and you can do that. And this is all configurable. Great, so now we go to the next level of the details. What is actually a controller and what we can control by the movement of the port? So think about that, let's say this is would be our encoder. It has values, let's say from zero to 128, 127, sorry, which is a very common in MIDI world. And this is a range of our controller. To that range, we can map our controllers that we define from one to five to very, very special ways. For instance, I want easy way. I want to map all my parameters from 100 to, from zero to 127. I want to map it on a controller CC7, which is, you know, is a volume parameter. And I will map it from zero to 127. So everything that gets to the encoder, it mapped straight away and you get exactly the same range. And this is very easy. This is what the most controllers can do, obviously. The trick is coming then for another controller at the same time, for controller two. I may say, I want to map a filter here. Uh, but instead of going from, 100, from zero to 127, I will start somewhere here. Well, let's say, 40 and that would go all the way up to let's say 100 and that would be the range my controller sends the value from say 30 to 127 linearly so what happens as soon as you start turning the knob turning the encoder nothing ha ha nothing happens here once you get to the point of 40, you immediately send the controller value 30 of a controller to, to define MIDI or USB port, as you prefer. And then uh, it goes all the way up to 100. That would be the end of your range where you go to 127. Cool? Yes. Now for another controller, for controller 3, for instance, I want to define another range. And Let's say this will be my attack. Cool. And I will start somewhere here. Again, well, let's that be, for instance, 20. And I will finish here, right at the spot of 127. And this will be the range I define for this controller. But I will start from very, very high value from 100 for my attack, 127. And I will go all the way down to, at this point, well, let's say, for instance, to 30. And I will go with some curve. So I can define, actually, a curve, not just being a linear, that can be um, some sort of, oh, very type of like a velocity curves that we have always on our keyboard. So this is something that you can define and it can be, going in that direction, it can go in that direction, or it can go lower. So it can be exponential, logarithmic, depends how you look at that. Great. Finally, um, again, I have five controllers overall, up to five. I may decide to use only one for a specific macro parameter, and I'll be totally fine with that. But let's say for another controller, number four, I may again define the range, for that encoder range from 0 to 127, 
And I might say, at this point, somewhere here, let's say that's a hundred, something should happen. And I want MIDI node to be sent at that point. So as soon as yeah, I'm moving the controller all the way up to 100, at that point, that MIDI message is triggered. And for instance, not on is sent. This is something that you can use to automate your DAW, to, to get into some tricks with, for instance, I don't know, um, um, with Ableton, for instance. Or I may say that at this point, I also can say on the, for instance, program change. So I might switch to a different program number as soon as I get to that uh, controller value. And this is again, this is very unique to the to the Macroport controller, but all of that can simultaneously work at the same time, leveraging different hardware outputs. So I have three MIDI hardware outputs, I have four USB MIDI outputs, and I can map controllers to MIDI and USB at the same time, or I can say it only goes to MIDI or it only goes to USB specific port. That gives me, gives me a lot of flexibility, lots of functionality. And finally, I might define my button. And for a push button, I can say, all right, it can be, well, obviously it doesn't have any range, but if it's triggered, uh, it can be just a push button. So you press and you trigger the note on as soon as you release it, it triggers not off. Or it can be the sort of lash, so you push it and it triggers not, and then until next time you push it, it won't send you not off. And again, it, that, that can be used in a very, very different ways to trigger drum machines, to trigger some sequences, arpeggiators, or whatever actually you want. So from here, now let's go to the real example. Well, that relaxing music is playing for the reason. So we have it mapped currently to the controller. Yeah, it's here, you can hear it. Probably even better now. Now I want to take this controller and connect it to my Profit X. And of course, I already pre-configured it, so I know what I'm doing. I connect it to the uh, MIDI output port 2, which is here on the back side with TRS. So this is MIDI input and three MIDI output ports. I'm going to a MIDI output port number 2, which I configured specially for my Profit X. And what I want to do with that, I want to be able to control by this parameter the uh, arpeggiator that I'm oops, currently playing, like quick arpeggiation. And um, I can define with this microparameter that I'm going to control attack of my envelope and the filter at the same time. So let me quickly adjust the volume here and you can hear it. And it gets softer. Softer attack. So attack is reverse, as you may guess, because uh, it goes on a smaller attack but all the way when you push it to the maximum position and filter opens when you get to the max position and it sends both of these messages at the same time so you can, you can mimic multiple parameters you can control the sign at the same time from, from this panel and assign it here and of course you can connect various synthesizers uh, all from the room here and map it to these physical outputs or logical output so you can assign different MIDI channels. And finally, of course, you can trigger the push button so it does something. And in that case, it triggers a drum machine which is playing on the DAW side. 